Shearers, badass women of Australian history. The 1960s. Us gals were running amok in mini skirts, go-go dancing in cages, and munching down on a brand new thing called the pill, which allowed us to fuck with abandon. It was a swinging time of revolution, baby. Not really. Australia was more backwards than the cap on a juvenile delinquent. Maternity leave wasn't a thing yet. Aboriginal women couldn't vote until 1962. You needed your husband's permission to get a passport. And rape within a marriage wasn't a crime. Yes, really. It was basically the 1800s, but with kind of cooler music. Huh. <clears throat> yes, but you could still smoke <sighs> inside. Smoking inside. Cool. Smoking is the coolest. Enter badass feminist radical, Mel Fonten who was set on her path to rebellion after getting fired from her job at the ABC. Well, you've been carrying around that pot plant for three months now, which leads me to believe you're pregnant. <laughs> How could I be pregnant? I'm not even married. You've done this to yourself. Back then, there was a law called the marriage bar. It was pretty cooked. Hello. Are you a woman in the public service who's just been outed as being secretly married? Congratulations! I'm here to tell you why you're no longer eligible for the workforce. You're a wife now. And that means you're busy doing important things like blanket origami, making the yum-yums, and regular sex with your husband. Furthermore, if you continue to work, you're stealing the job of a husband. You may as well be slapping the food out of the mouth of his starving children. Is that what you want? Is it? You'll never take my job, you Jezebel! This has been a message from the Australian Commonwealth Government. After Mel got the sack, she made her way to the home of pineapples and dodgy cops, Queensland, where she worked at Brisbane Uni as an academic. And then? He had the nerve to tell me that the marriage bar and kicking me out were for my own good. Yes, well, as a feminist, I know that keeping women subjugated as domestic servants in the house is one of the longest running forms of oppression in the patriarchy. Anyway, bye, Merle. Once again, Merle's inferior anatomy restricted her from being somewhere, even socialising with her friends in public spaces. It seems unfucking believable now, but back in the day, almost everywhere in Australia, women weren't allowed to drink in the same bars as men. In fact, in Queensland, it was against the law. So between the marriage bar and being banned from actual bars, this sweet little nerd decided... For heck's sake, I've got to do something about this. Something bold, something radical. Riot! A petition. Yeah. Yeah. A petition also works. Merle got her petition together and took it all the way to the top to the Queensland Minister for Justice. Hey Merle, as much as I appreciate the effort you went to making your little survey, these laws are in place for your own good. You don't want to go hang in with a bunch of rowdy blokes, do you? Well, that's not really the... And I, for one, care too much about you ladies to let you sweet things go unprotected from such depravity and foul talk. Mr Dalamoth, when do you think women will no longer need to be protected? <laughs> oh, I don't think ever. <laughs> By now it was fair to say that Merle had a hard-earned thirst for non-violent civil disobedience. <laughs> so she got her shit together and called her girlfriends to meet her for a protest at... The Regatta Hotel. And with strength in numbers, she was ready to bust in there and... Wait, where is everyone? <laughs> Just me, I think. This is Rosalie. She's the only one of Mel's friends who turned up. One lemonade, please. 
There's no women allowed in here. You're gonna have to leave. He would. Only we seem quite stuck. What? The bloody chained themselves in the bar! I said, give me a lemonade. You c Once it was clear they weren't leaving, the cops were called. But not just any cop. One of the most corrupt cops in Queensland's history, Jack Herbert, AKA the bag man. Right on. All right, girls. Where are the keys? We don't know. Now, girls, I'm asking you nice. Don't make me look like a fool around here. I know I have to take you out in fools. Well, I'm afraid you might have to. But if I was a policeman, currently collecting millions of dollars of protection money for illegal gambling and prostitution, then I'd want to keep a low profile. She tipped off reporters from the ABC about the protest. Just pretend I'm not here. Doing great, though. Putting this guy in a position where he either had to drag them out on camera or walk away. Have yeah, a good night, ladies. Yeah, yeah have, a, have, a, have a great one. Just, just don't drink too much. The ladies emerged victorious after their protest, appearing neither shaken nor stirred. <laughs> Women being allowed to drink in pubs? You had me at Merlot. The protest made headlines all over the world, but not everyone was impressed. Merle and Roe were accused of neglecting their children and even received death threats. And this was before Twitter, but they used the publicity to their advantage. And just a year after they shackled themselves to the pub, they successfully helped overturn the marriage bar. Are you a woman in the public service? And even this guy changed the law so that women could finally drink in public bars. You got me, Mel. <laughs> Mel is a total ledge because she wouldn't accept protection as an excuse for discrimination and wouldn't settle for close enough when it came to equality. So next time you're blowing the froth off a cold one at your local, pour one out for Mel and Roe. Because the only reason a girl shouldn't be allowed in a local pub is when she's already vomited on herself. Cheers. Problem, dude.